what's up people it's your girl adiola so by now i'm sure you must have heard about the fire outbreak at the arrival terminal of the oweri airport in imo state it's really sad it's heartbreaking because i don't think the fire should have gotten so out of hand if the firefighters had arrived much earlier but i'm very happy that nobody died blood of jesus cover us blood of jesus cover us Blood of Jesus! Blood of Jesus! Blood of Jesus! I think that's great that they were calling on the blood of Jesus, but I also was hoping that they would call 911, call for help, you know, not just call on Jesus. I could also hear someone saying that Jesus should quench the fire. Blood of Jesus, quench this fire! Blood of Jesus, quench it! Lord of Jesus, quench it. I think that's great that you have such faith, but you know, even the Bible says faith without work is dead. So I don't think Jesus will come down and do what we are supposed to do for us. I think we need to have a very good fire service system in place and make sure that they always have water. So I'm happy that nobody died, like I said, but I think that it's time for Nigerians to start adding work to their faith. It's good to call on Jesus. I'm also a believer in Jesus, but Jesus would never come down to do what we're supposed to do for us. Us. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So how is it possible that a bank in Nigeria would owe a business? And we're talking about billions of naira. Apparently, GT Bank was charging Innocent Motors excess and unlawful charges. So Innocent sued them, and in 2011, the court asked GT Bank to pay Innocent 2.4 billion naira fine. Now, instead of paying the fine, GT Bank sued Innocent Motors to the Supreme Court, but the judgment stands. And because the fine of 22% interest per annum had accrued over eight years that they refused to pay the fine, now they have to pay more than 6 billion naira as interest on top of the 2.4 billion naira making it eight billion naira. <laughs> I'm sorry for uh, GT Bank, but that's what it is. So innocent owner secured a writ of FIFA, which is a document issued by the court for the purpose of effecting court judgment on a debtor's property. So, so far, innocent has sealed seven branches of GT Bank. Oh, and of course, some customers are worried. At Zix Avenue, Oka, the capital city of Anambra State, where the sale of exercise took place, customers of the bank were astonished. They noted that the court should have considered the plight of customers before embarking on such a landmark judgment. You cannot frustrate the whole people because of two of you. Everybody's afraid. Like you can see me, I've come here to close my account with GTB. Okay, so I don't think that customers need to be worried. I mean, the court knows that people's money is in the bank, so I don't think that customers need to worry. So why is Innocent shutting down GT Bank uh, branches? Innocent is not shutting down GT Bank. Or sealing it they're, off. They're, yeah, because what they got was a writ of FIFA. Mm -hmm. The writ of FIFA is a seizure of assets. You're going to get as many buildings or as many cars, as many landed properties that equals the judgment sum. So they're sealing the GT Bank buildings? Yes, and not, not the operations of the bank. Ooh. So if you have money in GT Bank, don't worry, everything will be okay. And speaking of banks, five Nigerian men were caught in the United Arab Emirates. After robbing Abu the Shans, that's a place where foreign currencies can be exchanged. They stole 226 million naira, that's about $627,000. village as in leaving your country you left your country on a visiting visa to go and rob another country how bad this embarrassment is becoming too much my nigerian brothers and sisters why now why now why are you embarrassing me like this in 2016 three nigerians robbed a supermarket in dubai the video is online it's on youtube it's so embarrassing after that uae imposed new visa requirements on nigerians and in 2017 19 nigerians robbed several atm locations in the same uae <laughs> so then there are reports that they suspended 90 days visiting visa for Nigerians, as well as uh, the 30 day and the 90 day multi entry for Nigerians. However, the UAE embassy in Nigeria's Twitter page came out and said that the report is false. Now, this one's decided, ah, it's a bear, a bear, no, I am Jaini, it's a little when you get that, say that in English. And now you are starting to act the way you act inside, you are starting to do the same thing outside. Meanwhile, four days after a Nigerian was executed in Saudi Arabia for drug related offenses, another Nigerian was 
arrested for carrying cocaine. Please, how can we treat this get rich quick mentality that a lot of Nigerians now have? Let me know in the comment section below. You guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Algeria, 82-year-old President Abdulaziz Bouteflika finally resigned after 20 years in office. What? Father, father. <laughs> Wow, despite being on wheelchair for years, you know he recently announced that he's running for fifth time. So people have been on the street protesting now for weeks. And the protest has finally paid off. Although the military also pressured him to step down. I'm just so happy for the people of Algeria after 20 years. And hopefully the next president will be better. You get what I'm saying? Because, you know, sometimes they kick out dictator and then somebody else comes in who is worse than the dictator. And I'm also looking forward to hearing of such news from Togo, Cameroon, Burundi, Sudan, Gabon, Equatorial Guinea, and I mean all the African leaders who have been in power for way too long. Please do us a favor and leave. Congratulations to the people of Algeria. We're very happy for you guys. You guys not doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to the Gambia, my Gambia. It was revealed by the commission set up to investigate Yaya Jamin's financial dealings that our very own Mr. Presido, His Excellency Sheikh Professor Alahaji, Dr. Yaya Ejej Jamin, a Billy Mansa, stole about $362 million during his last day in office. I said, Father, Father. Now, a report by the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project said that Jamin and his associates also looted or misappropriated at least $975 million. That's almost one billion dollars what including a 364 million dollars from the telecoms company a 325 million dollars in illicit timber revenue a 100 million dollars of bilateral aid from china a 60 million dollars from the country's pension fund and so on and so forth i mean this is bad this is really really bad we're talking about a man that carried the quran with him and wore white everywhere acting holy i share he's just a common thief anyway <laughs> although although being a nigerian i'm sorry to say this but this is just just chicken change. <laughs> This is what our senators will steal. No offense to Gambians, I'm just saying. Now, last year, they put some of his assets on sale in the Gambia. We're talking about luxurious planes, luxurious cars. I mean, take a look at this. Instead of spending money on the people, our politicians like to acquire expensive toys that would one day be outdated. I mean, in 10 years, in 20 years time to come, all these luxurious cars, they will be outdated. Anyway, Yaya Jamin continues to live in exile in Equatorial Guinea. You know how it is. Birds of the same feather flock together, you know? Anyway, you guys not doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So we've been begging Nigerian government to end the special anti-robbery squad, SAS, for years now. I'm talking about the police unit that is basically licensed to kill. And once again, they've killed another innocent person, 36-year-old Kolade Johnson. The guy was watching soccer at an eatery when everybody in the eatery rushed out when they had a commotion outside. And that was when he got shot. How do you mistakenly shoot someone twice? That's what I don't understand. Eyewitnesses said that the policeman that killed this guy said out loud that he would kill somebody today and he did. Listen to his father. I am going to kill somebody today. And thereafter, he made a shot in the hair. And the next two shots directed to the standing hair boys. My boy happened to be the victim. All the lower abdomen, the private part shattered. And from the video that I saw, civilians were the ones trying to take the guy to the hospital. I didn't even see any policeman trying to help them at all. As in, I, I don't understand, I don't get it. This says, they have a pattern of ruthless human rights violations where victims are arrested and tortured until they either make a confession, even if they are not guilty, they have to confess to being guilty. It's either that or they bribe the officers. Did you hear what the officer that killed Kolade said? We saw some group of guys smoking in their end. I call their cultist. Wait, did he just say we reckon they are cultists because they were allegedly smoking in their home, which, by the way, is not true? We saw some group of guys smoking in their home. I call their cultists. And even if that were to be true, how can you just assume that someone will be a cultist because they're smoking in their home? So you kill someone because they're smoking in their home? Like, seriously, why was he acting like he's the victim in this video? This is so annoying. So we effect an arrest there. So suddenly they move us, me and my boys, they move us there. That's a blatant lie. Since when do people mob 
policemen in Nigeria. Not to talk about SARS that had guns. So in terms of escaping them all around, so I fired up. So I didn't know how he got to meet the boy in question. That we had a, he, I mean, that was shot dead. I don't know. But I only fired one up. However, two bullets were recovered from Kolade's body. Where myself and Kolade stood over there, there's a the taxi park over there. Kolade stood right beside me. Kolade didn't talk. The next thing I had, I, I saw was he pointed the gun at us and he shot twice. And in the name of going after thieves, Yahoo boys, and suspected cultists, they shoot sporadically. And this is not the first time that innocent people are killed by SARS. But you know, we never see this kind of aggressive behavior or this kind of disregard for human lives when the suspect is a big man or a politician. As usual, you know, police said that um, the men responsible for his death have been apprehended and subjected to internal disciplinary procedures. What does that mean? I mean, this is what every time, this is what they tell. It's just grammar, big grammar. Can you believe what the spokesperson of the Lagos State Police Command said? That is DPS Bala Elkana. The man said tattoos and dreadlock are strange to our culture in Nigeria. So now they target young people with tattoos because many cultists have tattoos. What the fuck? Can you imagine? How can I help this man? As I can't even help him. Where do I start with this one? Many of our parents have tattoos. No be so. In fact, still today there are so many cultures in Nigeria where they have tattoos. I thank you, you're that one Tiopo. And uh, we're talking about dread dreadlock. Are you kidding me? Dreadlock is so common. There are some people that they call them dada because they have dreadlocks. Even before I was born, that that is very common. And now what about rich people with tattoos and dreadlock? I mean, many of our musicians, they have tattoos. We skid, they the dog. Why can't they arrest those people? If this had happened to someone close to this man, do you know he wouldn't make this kind of statement? <sighs> we cannot get anywhere with this kind of myopic mentality. And you know, to call on this family, please accept our condolences. I can't even imagine what you're going through. <laughs> My condolences is dead. They didn't do anything to anybody. They just killed him. I just don't know what else we're waiting for to end SARS in Nigeria. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So moving on to South Africa, as elections are getting closer, you guys will not believe this, but another xenophobic attack has started. And once again, they are targeting other Africans in South Africa. At least three people were killed last week, and several shops of foreigners were looted. Three people were killed when stores owned by foreign nationals were looted in Durban. Hundreds of people originally from Malawi have had to evacuate their homes for their own safety and gather outside police stations and in mosques. I mean, look at what they did to this person's shop. That's just so heartbreaking. This is not right. When would South Africans stop hating their fellow Africans? Many of these people were from Malawi, by the way, and they just had a hurricane in Malawi. Many of them fled for their lives. This is not right. Now, this year makes it 25 years since apartheid ended in South Africa, but many of them seem to have forgotten that they there were so many African countries that came together at the time in solidarity with South Africa. And when it's a Chinese person or an Indian or a white immigrant in South Africa, they call them investors. You would never hear them doing something like this to those people. So why do some South Africans hate black Africans? And I like to stress the fact that this doesn't apply to all South Africans. It's not all South Africans. There are so many South Africans that are very hospitable, very nice, and very kind to people of other African countries. But for some reason, some of them continue to attack other Africans. It's, it's heartbreaking. Let me know what you guys think about what's happening in South Africa. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please make sure that you do that. Until next time, I will see y'all later. Peace out.